So I want to talk about modern art versus realism, and it's really a subject that I've avoided um, for years and really actually never thought I would even uh, attempt to try to talk about it. But it's something that I think, um, you know, creates a lot of, uh, or it's controversial, and I don't think it should be or, or needs to be, but I thought I'd just give you my perspective. You know, my first uh, true love has always uh, been for realism. You know, as a child, I was, you know, even uh, remember the paintings that my father hung on, on our walls or prints that we had. And I was always, uh, you know, very moved by, by everything that I saw. And it was the realism that was really, um, you know, was the thing that I was most attracted to ver very early on. Um, and even when I first started painting myself in my early 20s, um, you know, it was uh, my favorite artwork was, um, you know, Rembrandt and, and the, you know, self-portrait as the Apostle Paul, which I've uh, shown before. But it was really, um, you know, beyond that, and this is what I want to touch on, is that, you know, the, the real foundation of art or what really makes art is, you know, when, when something moves you in a certain way. And, you know, and that can be a, in a bad way or, or in, a, in a, a way, you know, a lot of art is meant to shock and there's all kinds of ways that, that art can move you. And, uh, you know, everybody has their own personal taste. Uh, my, my personal taste is, you know, something that, you know, I can't really put into words, but it's, I do uh, like art that moves me. I like art that touches me in some sort of deep way, which I, again, I can't really explain. But, um, you know, there's, there's just everything under the sun out there. But if you look at, for instance, uh, tapestry, um, you know, you can find tapestry that is very representational and is, uh, you know, meant to look like people and, and a, an actual, um, you know, scene that you might visually see in real life. But then there are also tapestries that are purely um, patterns and, and abstract. And so in, in the same way that, that you know, um, one is not necessarily better than the other, that they both can be appreciated on their own, um, you know, I think that uh, maybe one of the reasons that modern art is perhaps uh, misunderstood is that there's just so much um, art out there. Um, I mean, even in realism, there's so much, so many uh, paintings out there, and the vast majority of it I don't care for personally. You know, I have real... Um, uh, you know, if, if I want to talk about the, ar the art that I really love, you know, I can walk through the Metropolitan Museum of Art and, and really uh, the vast majority of the work in there, uh, the realism even, um, I don't care for. And there's only, a, uh, uh, you know, a certain style that I really like and I have to go and look for those paintings that I really love. But in, in modern art, it's even more uh, so for, for myself. You know, or, originally I would sort of... Um, you know, modern art wasn't appealing to me when I was younger, and then I d discovered uh, Mark Rothko, who, who was, and it was, I actually was in the uh, uh, museum, and it wasn't until I stepped into a room with Roth Rothko paintings all around me, and, uh, you know, really sort of gave it some consideration, and this was after I was an artist, and after I was, you know, working with colors and trying to understand uh, color harmony and some other things, and it wasn't until I stepped into that room and spent a good 30 minutes, maybe, I don't remember, but it must have been even an hour just sitting on a bench and looking at these paintings and taking it all in. And I realized, you know, there really is something here that's, that's affecting me in some kind of way. And by the end of this uh, period of, of sort of uh, letting these very large paintings in, in the environment that I was sitting in, uh, you know, really take hold of me, and I really learned to appreciate uh, Mark Rothko. So let me show you some paintings of an artist that I just became aware of. And uh, this, is, this artwork really epitomizes what I love, um, and it's very much a personal thing. Um, but there, I could try to explain to you why I love uh, these paintings so much. Um, you know, they're, they're the paintings that I would hang in my home and, you know, hang in my children's rooms. And, uh, you know, there's something about them that, um, you know, it's, it's certainly representational in some way. There's horses and dogs and people. Um, but there's a mood that, that are created by these paintings that, that really touches me uh, personally. Um, I think that, um, you know, there's an abstraction to them. Uh, there's abstraction in the concept, in the composition. Uh, in, in the placement of figures, there's there's abstraction in the in the brushwork, 
you know, you can look at any part of these paintings and uh, up close and, and there's a beauty to the, to the colors and the brushwork and the, and the pattern. But in the end, artwork is very personal and these are uh, just paintings that touch me. Um, you know, there's, uh, if I was a child, I can imagine uh, growing up with a painting like this on my wall and I don't think I would ever understand it. I w it, would, it would be a door for my imagination. Um, and, and that's what, what I think these paintings are more than anything else uh, to me and, and maybe why I like them so much. Uh, but I just thought I would show you these paintings. Um, uh, Franca is uh, from Italy. Um, she's uh, only been painting for a couple years now and I uh, can't wait to see what she does next. But it was just, uh, you know, shocking to me to, to see that somebody was painting at this level and I, and I don't mean in realism, but I mean in, in her ideas, in, in her ability to uh, maintain abstraction throughout the painting, um, to, to create these, uh, these dream worlds, uh, so to speak, that really gives my, my mind a place to wander. But in the end, it's really uh, these paintings are, are just paintings that for, for some reasons that I really can't put into words uh, really touch me, and I thought I would share them with you. If you go to drawmixpaint.com, you can find links to all my free videos. If you go to genevafineart.com, you can find out all about the paint that I use to paint with, that I manufacture myself right here in Austin, Texas. And thank you so much for watching.